Thank you, Patty, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is not Elisa Lucozzi. My name is Fred Brunig. I'm a member of the worship committee of Guilford Community Church, and welcome to the uh, folks from other churches here, Dummerston and um, West Brattleboro and Center Church, and anybody from Dover, let's... Um, I won't, I won't uh, embarrass you by asking you to raise, raise your hands, but, <laughs> but welcome, glad you could join us today. Um, Elisa, unfortunately, is ill, and uh, she doesn't have COVID. She says she's tested a number of times, including PCR, but she's very sick. She called yesterday, and it sounded pretty terrible. But um, she did send a message that I would like to read for you this morning. I'm so very sad to not be with you today, especially after this week's tra tragic events in Uvalde, Texas, and just after the second anniversary of George Floyd's murder. I wish I could say that we are living in unprecedented times, and while that is certainly true when we talk about the continuing pandemic, sadly, it is not true when we are talking about racism and gun violence. In the face of all the heaviness, Heartache, grief, and outrage let us find some small way to hold on to joy, to hold a space where tears of pain and joy can sit in the same pew. Can we keep our grief and shock from becoming inertia? Can we infuse our grief with levity so that we can rise up and do whatever it takes to make this world a safer place for all? After Sandy Hook, we thought this will never happen again. After Parkland, we thought, surely this will never happen again. And again, after the horrific deaths, deaths of these beloveds from Robb Elementary School, we will think once again, this will never happen again. Let us not only think it or pray for it, let us work to make it a, a reality. With every laugh, with every tear, with every phone call to a senator or a letter to a representative, with every action we take to create a world that is safer, more loving, may we honor their lives. So this is in preface to our plans to have Holy Humor Sunday today. So um, let us proceed with our plans to find some levity, even where there is much sadness and grief. So, um, moving on to uh, the regular beginning here, uh, Elisa had said that um, this is our first ever Holy Humor Sunday here at Guilford Community Church and our first union service of 2022. If you happen to know the history of Holy Humor Sunday, you, you would know that it usually happens on the Sunday after Easter, but this year the joke's on you. <laughs> um, so uh, we want to welcome everyone who is in, in, uh, online, on our online Guilford uh, Community Church and uh, also downstairs in our second sanctuary. Um, well, even though you're not here in this space with us, you are definitely in our hearts. And again, welcome to Center Church, uh, West Brattleboro Congregational, Dummerston, and Westover. Congregational Church. Let us revel in the joy of being together in all the ways that we can. Let us gather worshiping God, offering our prayers, our jokes in our hearts, and reflecting on God's word to this day. We keep creating new ways of the church because we know that being the church has nothing to do with the building and everything to do with loving each other. Let us gather to be the church in a new and comical way and welcome with a welcome wide enough for all. We'd like to begin our services with an acknowledgement to honor and acknowledge the land we occupy 
by honoring and acknowledging those original people who belong to the land. We gather here on the bank of Wanastakuk, the broad brook, in the shadow of the great Mount Wantastiquit, in the valley of the rushing Quinetiquit, or Connecticut River, to worship and discern together the call of God to the United Church of Christ for these days. Let us know that we do so on the homelands of the Sokoki Abeniki, who have lived in relationship with this land for thousands of years and are still living here today. We offer them our gratitude and respect, our repentance and hope and solidarity with them. It is a holy communion we share of life on earth, of past and present, of pain and reconciliation, of mystery and majesty. So let us begin with the lighting of the candles. I'd like to make an announcement. Um, I'm Brian Brown at Center Church. I want to encourage you all on a gallery walk um, to come down on Friday. There's going to be um, a drumming group of 10 drummers. There's going to be some um, dance. And there's um, very interesting work of art in the church, um, which kind of are funny if you think of them. You know, they're, they're very abstract realism, quite amazing. So uh, starting at around 4 o'clock, starting afternoon, come on, come on down to the Green Center Church. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll have uh, other announcements after the worship service for any church-related announcements. Thank you, Fred. As we gather today, let us be grateful for our very lives, for this breath in our lungs with which we can praise God, where we can connect with the Holy Spirit, Ruah, and know that God is within us. We now have our intro. <clears throat> And I would like to make an announcement. My name is Rachel Johnson, but I did not play the prelude, as you noticed in your program. <laughs> Patty Meyer is here in the house and did a great job. So thank you, Patty. <laughs> to be blessed with Elisa doing the solo, the verses today, but thank you to um, Sue and 
Connie. Connie. I, just, I know Connie. That's all right. We help each other. <laughs> Sue, she was, Sue was blocking her, so I couldn't see her. Anyway, uh, that's, you can, that's our intro. Let union be in all our hearts. Um, please join me in the call to worship. Joy is loose in the wiggles of the children, the whispers of the youth, the smiles of the adults. We praise God for this glorious day. Let the praise break forth in the most unlikely places and in silly ways. Joy and praise fills our hearts and in our songs. Let the laughter be deep, for we are God's people. Please rise if you're able and body or spirit and join in the hymn, This is the Day, which you should find in your bulletin. <clears throat> I think. Oh. Is it in the hymnal? Sorry, it wasn't in my, uh, it's so, have you found it, what number is it? 257. 257, thank you. It's not in the bulletin, it's in your hand. Take two! <laughs> Filled with you. Please be seated. Please join me in prayer for our opening prayer of invocation. I was already born with a good sense of humor, but love has taught me to laugh in a different way. Now, like dawn, eager to embrace darkness, I laugh like a shell about to reveal its pearl. If you break me, I laugh. Poem Laughter by Rumi. We move to a call for confession. None of us like to look foolish, but which is sillier? chasing after the world and all its gaudy trinkets which flatter our souls, or being a fool for Christ, imitating him in service to others, offering ourselves in love and joy to the world. Let us admit to God the foolish choices we make each day and every day as we pray, saying, 
You know, if you join with me on the prayer of confession, you know better than we do, amused God, what important people we believe we are. Believing we have to be serious all the time, we miss out on the joy of your creation. Choosing to feast on the pain of the world, we skip the picnic offered in paradise. Clinging to the despair which is our best friend, we ignore Jesus who can bring us home to your heart. Forgive us, heart of joy, and make us open to the startling and upside down ways in which you work. Fill us with laughter, fill us with your healing joy, fill us with the love poured into, into us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I have a time of silence. The Gospels tell us over and over again of the joy which comes to us through Christ. When Jesus was around, lives were changed. The sick were healed. The sorrowful began to laugh with joy. The good news is that this joy is now given to us. Through the Holy Spirit, we are gifted with joy. We are sent forth to bring good news to the oppressed, to bring healing to the broken, to anoint everyone with the oil of gladness. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Do we have any children in, in our audience? We have one. Great. Lily and James, we're going to have kids read a few riddles. I guess this is a private note to me. <laughs> Um, but Lara, Lily, and James, you want to go ahead with our with our plan? Oh, you're back! Oh. <laughs> you have some jokes. Whoa! It's taking away the show this morning. What? What happens when you leave your puppy out in the sun? Mm, he shrinks. Good. He melts. It turns into a hot dog. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> These are in honor of Desi, also, because he's not here with us today. What has hands? but cannot clap. Uh, a a clock. Clock. <laughs> What has to be broken before you can use it? An egg. Hey. Okay, a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> An egg. Which letter of the alphabet has the most water? Okay, sorry. The C. <laughs> okay, here's a riddle for you all. In a one-story pink house, there was a pink person, a pink cat, a pink fish, a pink computer, a pink chair, a pink table, a pink telephone, a pink shower. Everything was pink. What color were the stairs? What color were the stairs? It was a one hotel house. It was a one story house. Oh. You got it. <laughs> I had to be listening. <laughs> what has four legs at night, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs? I forgot what. <laughs> okay, that's okay. You can start again. Three legs in the evening. Is it oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? No. 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 <laughs> okay. 
A person. Oh. A person. You know, because um, a oh. baby has four legs. Um, oh. And, and a grown up has two legs. Um, and well, the four part is, you know how a baby ha um uses its hands and legs to get around. Yeah. That's like the four legs. And then two legs is a grown up walking around. And then um, <laughs> three. A three legs is some is a, a cane. With a cane, I think is what she's trying to say. Great. So shall we um have our <clears throat> prayer for the children to the to the tune of Frere Jacques, for those of you who are joining us for the first time. As you journey, as you journey, may you know, may you know, love and hope go with you, love and hope go with you, wherever you go, wherever you go. We had it in harmony. So our readings are by my lovely wife, Patrice. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is a poem by Hafiz, To Build a Swing. You carry all the ingredients to turn your life into a nightmare. Don't mix them. You have all the genius to build a swing in your backyard for God. That sounds like a hell of a lot more fun. Let's start laughing, drawing blueprints, gathering our talented friends. I will help you with my divine lyre and drum. Hafiz will sing a thousand words. You can take into your hands like golden saws, silver hammers, polished teakwood, strong silk rope. You carry all the ingredients to turn your existence into joy. Mix them, mix them. The second reading is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Bless these words to our understanding. This is where we are going to make a shift in the program to uh, have the first anthem. So if the choir could come up and we'll sing Feel Good. Did you want to say something about it? Yeah, oh great. As the choir gathers, I just want to say the title tells it all here, feel good. So we hope you're smiling behind that mask while you're listening. <laughs> We're gonna try to smile while we sing this. It's pretty hard, but don't worry about that. We'll just take care of it, right? <laughs> and um, some of the words are feeling good, feeling good, not good English, but I got love in my heart. So I hope you hear that part. And I feel good and there's joy down in my soul. That's what we're going for today. I can't explain it. 
Those are the words of the song and a few others. I hope you catch a few. Most of us didn't see that before this morning. We, got, we have to feel good about ourselves. <laughs> Let's see. Mistake of doing. Here we go. So. So here in um, Elisa's note to me is, in place of the sermon, we're inviting anyone to share a joke or two. And um, I see the Reverend Audrey Walker back there and all decked out. Would you like to come and kick us off? Of course. Elisa says, Reverend Audrey has a good one. So actually, while you're getting ready for that, I'll, I'll share the one that I, um, that I told Elisa earlier this week. I can remember how it goes. A priest, an imam and a rabbit 
decided to go, decided to go give blood. So they went down to the uh, blood donor drive thing, and the priest went in, and after about 20 minutes, he came out and said, well, it turns out I'm a type A. <laughs> and then the imam went in, and he came out a little while later and says, well, I just discovered I'm a type B. Then the rabbit went in and came out and said, turns out I'm a type O. <laughs> well, that's, that's right. Elisa was going to bring, was gonna bring a, rim, a drum to do a rim shot. <laughs> This one's out of season, but it's still holy humor, so I'm going to include it. Um, Tom had been all the minor roles, basically, of the Christmas pageant for all of his life, young life. You know, he'd been a shepherd, been an angel, uh, been a, even one of the wise men, and he was getting older, and he realized that he was about to be too old for Joseph, and he really, really wanted to turn to be Joseph this year. But the leaders gave the role of Joseph to Fred, who also had never been <laughs> Joseph before. Tom was crushed, but he politely agreed to be the innkeeper for the pageant. So the pageant arrives. <clears throat> Joseph and Mary come up to the inn, knock on the door. The innkeeper opens the door, and Joseph says, do you have any room for poor, weary pilgrims? The innkeeper says, yeah, we got plenty of room. Come on in. <laughs> this is called The Pope Dies and Goes to Heaven. The Pope dies and naturally goes to heaven. He's met by the reception committee, and after a whirlwind tour is told that he can enjoy any of the myriad recreations available. He decides that he wants to read all the ancient original texts of the Holy Scriptures and spends the next eon or so learning the languages. After becoming a linguistics master, he sits down in the library and begins to pore over every version of the Bible, working back from the most recent easy reading to the original script. All of a sudden, there was a scream in the library the angels came running to him, only to find the Pope huddled in a chair, crying to himself and muttering, an R, they left out an R. God takes him aside, offering comfort, and asks him what the problem is. After collecting his wits, the Pope sobs again, it's the letter R. The word was supposed to be celebrate. She's gone. I wanted to give those to Jalushka, but she started to call. Good morning. These are my Paula Poundstone pants. Oh, oh, I couldn't find the jacket that goes with it. It was my mother's. No. Anyway. What kind of soap do mermaids like to wash their hands and fins in? Slippery. <laughs> Ivory. What? Ivory. Tide. No. <laughs> what kind of egg, what kind of car does an egg drive? A yolk. No. A Yorkswagen. <laughs> Why am I blanking? I, lo I left my joke book at home. What kind of car, what kind of tea does Jesus like to drink? How does he make his tea? He brews it. Hebrew. 
Z. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 You've got one or two. I'll come back if I remember my jokes by heart. So we had a pirate joke earlier. Why does it take pirates so long to learn the alphabet? Because they spend so many years at sea. <laughs> and why does the triangle feel sorry for the circle? Because it's pointless. <laughs> Here is my favorite joke ever. What did the Tin Man say when he was run over by the steamroller? Curses foil again. <laughs> I just learned this joke last week from my sister, and I think it's great. So this is the story of the talking dog. So uh, this guy named Sam read an ad in the paper, and it said, talking dog for sale. Talking dog for sale. I got to check this out. And it turned out that the address was like right down the street from him. So he walked down the street, and he saw this big dog in the front yard with a gate, you know, in, in front of him, and the dog looked up at him and said, hi, my name's Rover. Do you want to come in? And uh -huh. Sam went, yeah, this is pretty incredible. And Rover opened the gate for him and said, come on in. And so Sam said, what have you been doing with your life? And Rover said, well, in my younger years, I worked for the CIA, and I helped them solve a lot of problems overseas. And then I came back to the United States, and um, they put me on duty at a, a local at an airport down, you know, by the border. And I did a lot of really good work with helping them, you know, take care of drugs coming across the border. So I've had a quite an exciting life. And then right at that point, the owner walks out the door and he goes, oh, hi, you must be Sam. I, I know you uh, were interested in buying Rover. And Sam goes, yeah, but how much are you going to sell them for? And the owner says, well, 10 bucks, that'll work. And Sam goes, $10 for a talking dog? <laughs> and the owner goes, yeah. He is the biggest, fattest liar ever. <laughs> he has never left this yard. Okay, this is easy. Thanks a, thanks a lot. <laughs> Does this involve ribbons in any way, Brian? <laughs> Great paper. I'm happy to see you, Brian. Oh, yeah. Okay, so oh, that's, that's all right. I need to say, I guess. So. No, no. no. Um, so I have a friend who um, <clears throat> jumped out of an airplane with a parachute for his first time ever doing that. Um, he, was, he was a good friend, uh, but he was very self-confident. He strapped on his parachute. He jumped out of the airplane. He's over 3,000 feet high, very confident. He said, I don't need to pull the, the ripcord yet. Plenty of time. A few seconds later, he was only 300 feet from the ground. And he said, oh, plenty of time, plenty of time. <laughs> Split second later, three feet only from the ground, and he didn't pull the ripcord. He said, why? I can just jump down from here. He's <laughs> <laughs> a very good friend. Uh, and I imagine you've heard about the restaurant, the new restaurant on the moon. Yeah, a uh, great menu, but no atmosphere. <laughs> Get the hook as we uh, get too long. <laughs> Go for it, run. This man is driving down the road early one morning. He has six emperor penguins in his back seat. And a policeman observes him driving along, and so he pulls him over and 
asks for his registration, his driver's license, and so forth, and so he furnishes that. And he says, what did I do? Well, really, nothing, but you really should take those penguins to the zoo. And he says, oh. So the next morning, he's driving along, same place, same car, same policeman, six emperor penguins in the back seat with sunglasses on. <laughs> And the policeman pulls him over and said, I thought I told you to take those penguins to the zoo. He said, oh, I did, I did. They had a wonderful time. <laughs> Today we're going to the beach. Oh, I thought. Any, any other uh, takers? I have to raise your hand. I have a... Uh, right. Come on up. Yeah. While Terry's coming up, I'll, I'll just... Uh, one of the... Another holy humor joke that I remember from my childhood was learning that um, God's name was Andy. And... <laughs> Lucy knows that was it was just really neat because um, you know because we sang the hymn and he walked with me and he talked with me. <laughs> Lucy laughed before I was even told. And he, and he. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not. I I guess this is a joke. It's really a story that Peter Amidon told me and probably told many of you. So if I don't get it right, Fred, hopefully you can help me. It's really just about two two older women that are, their husbands have died, they're spending lots of time with each other, they love each other so much, they play cards every week, they, you know, have lunch together once in a while, they're just so happy to have each other in their lives. And um, one day, one of the women says to the other, oh, you know, how lucky are we? I'm just so happy to have you be my friend. And the other woman says, oh, I feel just the same way. Isn't it, aren't we lucky to still be alive and be able to appreciate each other's company? And the first woman says, yes, I just have one question. What's your name? <laughs> Have. Go ahead. Come on, Bill. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll suggest that maybe we'll move on after, after Bill. <laughs> well, I can't remember jokes. Uh, and, uh, but there's, all, there's one joke I can remember, uh, which was uh, told to me uh, in my uh, early 20s. And I guess it stuck with me like, uh, you know, oh, anything you learn when you're really young and you never forget it. So this is how it goes. Um, a couple of goats. And uh, they're walking by the back of a movie theater. This is in the old days when uh, movie theaters had, uh, they actually had film that they would uh, <laughs> send back after they've shown it. And so one of the goats says to the other, um, I think I'd like to go and have a, see how that film tastes. So he went and he ate the film and uh, he came back. Do you know the joke? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and the other guy said, well, how did you like it? How did you like the film? He's, and he said, well, that was okay, but I like the book better. <laughs> well, they had uh, one more to get us back into the, um, some more into this, to this, to the, uh, what? You, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, good, good. It was be probably better than the one I was yours. <laughs> well, as you know, when you pass away, you go past St. Peter at the gate before you know whether or not you're going to get in. And one day, St. Peter was standing there watching, and he saw this woman in a blue robe coming up, and he realized it was Mother Mary. And he said, of course, Mother Mary, come on in. And Mary walked on. And then he called out to her, Mary, I have a question for you. 
And she turned around, very solemn, and said, yes. He said, you know, all throughout history, all the pictures of you, the, the, the paintings, the sculptures, everything, you're never smiling. Can you tell me why? And she looked at him pretty sadly and he said, yep, yes I can. If you really must know, I always wanted a girl. <laughs> Why did the tomato turn red? Because she saw the Caesar salad dressing. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for that. Those wonderful, those wonderful jokes and humor. I'll offer a pastoral prayer that Elisa had chosen by Tom Schumann. Dour-faced in the presence of stunning sunsets, stricken with chronic severity while surrounded by gurgling babies, frozen-souled when touched by the warmth of grace. If we are made in your image, it's no wonder people think of you as a grouchy old geezer, God of joy. So breathe on us. Fill our souls with laughter, which chases away the long faces, chuckles which wipe frowns off our brows, great guffaws which shatter hardened hearts. Fill us with breath of side-splitting shrieks so we can celebrate this precious life and the joy of being loved by you. Amen. So we'll um, move on. Oh, looks like Terry's splitting. Hey, um, Fred, we can't go along with that. We're still in the Frank Sinatra joke. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. That, that's not a very holy humor joke. <laughs> but you can ask me later. Thank you. Um, but I'd like to invite the choir up for our second anthem. Ain't that good news? <laughs>
gonna sing a song for my Jesus. I'm gonna play my heart for my Jesus. I'm gonna put on my robe for my Jesus. I'm gonna wear my crown for my Jesus. Ain't that good news? Before I share the prayers, I shared with Fred this morning when I walked in that as I was coming down today, I, um, I remembered that, I'm not sure, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I heard on the news that President Zelensky said, if we can't laugh, we might as well just give up. And that's from President Zelensky, so we can do it. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts. For the moments of laughter and unbridled joy you give to us, for opportunities to laugh at ourselves, for the belly laughs of children, for friends and family who love us because of our quirks, and not just in spite of them, for artists, who give us the opportunity to see the world through the surreal, for the courage to smile even when difficulties arise, for those who have hope even when others think there is no hope, for saints in the Lord who overflow with laughter and spread your joy to all of us, for the words of Jesus that defy our logical minds, for teaching us that we can be born again, for the woman who finds a lost coin and calls her friends and neighbors to celebrate, for the absurdity of a camel trying to fit through the eye of a needle, for the father of the prodigal son who is willing to look like a fool as he runs to greet his son. For the generosity of the landover, landowner who will pay workers a whole day wage when they only worked one hour. For tiny bits of faith that can move entire mountains. For the reality that nothing can live unless it first dies. For the great reversal of the gospel, that the last shall be made first, that the rejected stone became the cornerstone, that those who wish to become a great, to become great must serve, that the lost will be found, that the small will become great, that though you are wisdom, you choose to forget your sins. That when we are weak, your strength shines through us. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts. Thank you for the gift you give us that allows us to enjoy these things to the full. We can laugh because of the most amazing thing of all that the King of Kings surprised everyone when he showed up as a tiny baby, born in a stable, that light shone so bright, it overcame the darkness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. So if someone has a prayer that they would like to share with the rest of us, and we're getting some online as well. Prayers for the family and friends of those who lost their lives in Uvalde and Buffalo. Prayers for peace in Ukraine and for peace in all countries torn by hate and war. Prayers for Mary Lila and Al Franklin, who's with us today, and Lucy, who's also with us today for Mary Ellen Kohler, and for Catherine Morgan, and for Victoria James. And does anyone else have a, yes? I'm Bonnie, and I would like prayers for my adult children, 
and nine. I have nine grandchildren and seven of them that suffer with the disease of addiction that are actively using. It breaks my heart. Thank you. Bonnie would like prayers for her adult children and so many of her grandchildren who are struggling with addiction. Lord, hear our prayers. Lucy? Lucy would like to thank everyone for all their prayers and good wishes during her recent illness. Patty. I'd like prayers for my mom going through many, many kidney stones. Mm. Mm. Patty would like prayers for her mom who's struggling with kidney stones. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm the pastor at First Congregational Church, and we have a nursery school there called West B. And there is a little boy in that nursery named Duncan. And Duncan had, has had a chronic um, condition where his lungs fill up with the liquid. And um, he had surgery in uh, Children's Hospital, I guess, somewhere in Pennsylvania. And um, they thought he was going to be okay, but he's not. He has to go back for more surgery um, to try to figure out what's going on, clear his lungs. And it's been a very frightening time because we were all fearing he was going to die. Duncan. For Duncan and all little children who are struggling with illness of many kinds that are sometimes undiagnosed and sometimes hard to figure out the solution to get them better, Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. Prayers for Texas and for all the children there who died way too soon for no reason. Is that Mary Lila? Yes, it is. Hi. Yes. Mary Lila's thankful for everyone here and for being able to still get up and about. May we all be more like Mary Lila. Keep at it. No matter what they tell you. Yes, Elizabeth. Prayers for Wendell Howard, who is declining. Benoit I'm sorry, the second name? Benoit de Kermoubi and Dorothy Christie all were declining. Prayers for Wendell Howard, Benoit, and Dorothy Christie, who are all waning. Kathy. Pastor Lisa thanks all of us here who are here present and who stepped up to the plate to take over the service. Thank you, Fred. And thank you, Rachel, for 
leading the choir, for Patty for playing. Terry? Prayers of quick healing for Pastor Elisa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Prayers of quick healing for Pastor Elisa. Take the time you need. Mm-hmm. We got your back. Yeah. Anyone else? Carol? Ron and Jill Harnish. Prayers for Jill Harnish. Yeah. And I'd also like to ask prayers for my family as we mark the anniversary of Jeremiah's departure. Carol would like all of us, all of our prayers for... Especially for you. No, Phoebe. Phoebe. For Phoebe. Phoebe. Sister. Yes. For Jeremiah's passing last year. Six years ago. Um, How is that possible? I know. Wow. I'm sorry I didn't realize that, that it was six years ago. Kind of seems like yesterday. (laughs) Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us using whatever words help us to embody its promise. May we bring about one small glimpse of the kingdom of God, a kingdom where all are well all are fed and free, where all are whole, where all know love, where all know they are beloved. Let us pray. Our Father and Mother, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to offer one last prayer for the family and friends of Bernice Larocque who left us this weekend. Um, I invite you to um, make an offering to the, to the work of the church. Uh, Union Sundays, we, if you are from another church and have an envelope um, for your church, we'll separate those after, after the service, uh, and um, I guess that's the only announcement I need to make about that. And um, thank you for, for your presence in today, and sort of let us collect our morning offerings.
we give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us in the upside down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth not by what we have, but by what we can give away. Let us not only offer our material gifts, but also a smile, perhaps even some levity. Let us give away generously in this offering to bless and bring unspeakable joy to our community. Amen. Amen. While you're standing, please pass the peace to your neighbors, including all of our neighbors online. The closing hymn is one that's familiar to many in our church, and it's in, it is in our bulletin. I still have joy. It's going to be a cappella. Patty just gave us the notes. I still have joy. That's how it starts. Let's sing together. I still have joy. I still have joy. a joyful sound. Join me in the benediction. The laughing one called us together so we could share in the laughter of life. The laughing one sends us out. Go out to laugh, to live, to love, and when you hear a good joke, Go forth rejoicing, for the fun has just begun.
Thank you again to Patty for playing today and to Rachel for leading our choir. Uh, are there, if there are any church-related announcements, uh, now would be the time for them. We've sort of drifted away a little bit in the last several weeks from, from announcements being church-related, but... Oh, I'm just informed that our website said that our worship service started at 10.30. So apo apologies to those of you who saw that and came in at 10.30. And I, <laughs> right, well, holy, holy humor, I hope you were, were able to take it in good humor. Um, sorry about that. Thank you, Kathy. Um, there, uh, there are some community announcements on the bulletin board that you should check on your way out. Um, Elisa did leave a um, message or about a service of lament uh, this afternoon from 3.30 to 6 at St. Michael's Episcopal Church um, to, uh, what, to say, what do we do with the sadness, outrage, and despair we feel in the face of the killing of so many of God's children? So if you would like to gather with others this afternoon at 5.30 to 6 at St. Michael's Episcopal Church. Uh, announcements for our church next Sunday is Pentecost. So red is, of course, the color of the day. And um, dress up in your best red finery. Uh, Sunday, June 12th is as a, the much-awaited and postponed Star Wars Sunday. May the Force be with you. It's usually on May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Um, Jen Rankin and Pastor Elisa will be leading the... Um, worship service next Sunday. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, on the 12th. Uh, and it will also be uh, Pentecost themed, apparently. Uh, you're invited to wear Star Wars costumes or any themed wear. Sunday, June 19th will be our annual ONA service, followed by our union service the following week at First Congregational Church at West Brattleboro for the Pride Service at, uh, at West Brattleboro. So are there other church-related announcements that we need to say? Um, yes, sorry. Thank you. That's, uh, thank you for reminding me about the uh, celebration of Tony and Margaret Dale Barron's life is on Saturday, June 25th on the grounds outside. We have a lar very large tent. Um, and the family is asking that you, if you are able to come to, to uh, RSVP so that we can get an idea of the numbers. Uh, in the, um, the link for that is in the e-news. If you don't get the e-news, uh, talk to me and I'll, I'll uh, get your information. We can get that to you. Thank you, Lucy. Um, any other announcements? And then birthdays. I saw that it was Kathy Bullock's birthday yesterday, I think. So she's sort of an adjunct member of our church. Okay, happy birthday to Kathy. None others? Yeah. Well, good thing Kathy had a birthday. <laughs> I can't believe it. Okay, let's give us a note. We'll sing. Happy birthday, happy birthday, we love you. Happy birthday, and may all your dreams come true. When you go out the candles, on life stays alone. It's the love light in your eyes wherever you go. Blessings on you all and have a wonderful afternoon with this glorious day that we've been given. I invite you to visit outside so that we can be safe, as safe as possible. Thank you, Patty.
sorry to interrupt Patty's, um, but we do have a bunch of these test home test kits that are about to expire in another couple of weeks. If you need some, see me there in the office.